Hi, I'm James, and I'm a psychology teacher. Hi, I'm Vellum, and I'm a brand strategist. Every week, we go on tangents to answer one of life's big questions. Our theme for season three is career. And before we get into that today's question, mm -hmm. like, subscribe, let us know that you think what we're doing is great, or let us know what you're doing, what that you think what we're doing is terrible. Yep. We'd like to know because we have so many ideas we go through so many ideas every episode but we want to know is it is it great is it not and the we want to make sure what we're doing is valuable for you we're out there watching yeah. and listening so like subscribe wherever you listen to your podcasts look for teaching tangents and yeah season three i can't quite believe it's season three our theme is career what were the four resources we've chosen one of them was Wait But Why. Yeah. I so uh, Tim Urban's Wait But Why, and specifically the post about how to pick a career. Uh, there's something in brackets. How to pick a career that will work for you or something. Yeah. Um, and we have a video. So all the links are in, the, are in the bottom in the description or in the show notes if you're listening to this on the audio side of things. Um, another one is a short video from Professor Yuval Noah Harari, who uh, wrote Sapiens and uh, has been on a bunch of different stuff, but about mm -hmm. how to adapt to the 21st century. And he's in the news again, by the way, about how robots hacking a machine, but that's another thing. So he talks about the kind of careers people are going to increasingly have and how to adapt yeah. to the 21st century and the fact that things are going to be shade changing and it's very likely that you'll have to reinvent yourself more than you used to uh, or more than other generations used to, rather. Um, then we have another video, a uh, much older reference by Alan Watts, philosopher, um, and very famous for having brought a lot of Eastern uh, and Buddhist mm -hmm. knowledge, philosophy to, well, to, the, to Britain and to the West, let's say, in general. Mm -hmm. uh, and this one is a, uh, there's a bunch of different bits and pieces from, he was a teacher, uh, he had a TV show. And this one is about what do you desire? So he talks, he's referring back to talking to his students. So we're still very much in the same realm of what we're doing now. I'm not saying like mm. I'm like him at all, but um, although maybe I don't know, maybe time will tell. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have the same kind of like uh, out there, perhaps. I don't know, maybe I am. Anyway, uh, he talks about what do you desire and uh, listen to it. I recommend it. It's just a few minutes. Mm. Uh, and then that's on YouTube. Uh, all of the three others are on YouTube. And then we have, Another video that is part of a, funny enough, a series of branded content from Etsy.com. So the, not that this thing is sponsored at all in any sh way, shape or form, but because uh, Etsy's heartland is all about promoting craft people yeah. and crafts, hmm. uh, they made a series of movies to go look at people who are masters at their craft. And this short movie, it's called The Sword Master, and it's about one of the last remaining blacks, traditional uh, sword blacksmiths in Japan. Uh, and it's also a, so it's a way to talk about craft and people who dedicate their lives to it. Uh, and I was just telling you before we start hit the record button, I went to the butchers. Uh, so I, I live in Paris and I went to the butchers around the corner mm. this morning to buy some stuff or well, bacon to go with my eggs for brunch later. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, there was this old butcher there. He wanted to chat and it was awesome. And he was, uh, he was talking about how sad it is that he teaches at, he's, he's 70. So he has 50, he wow. said, I got 55 years experience in butchering. Wow. Uh, and I was like, wow, that's a lot. You must be masterful at what you do. Mm. Uh, and he said, yeah, and I teach at the butcher school. Uh, but it's such a shame because everybody, all these kids want to go to business schools and nobody, they have trouble filling classes. And he wow. was like, we need butchers. It's a good job. Um, mm. You know. Now, he was also saying that he was on the metro at 5 at 30 a.m. and looking at all the young people coming back from Halloween parties. So then I didn't say that. We didn't have time to go further in the conversation. But I think one of the reasons a lot of kids want to go to the business schools is they don't want to wake up at 5 30 to go to work. Uh, yeah. And yeah, it is a bit hard work, but it is a craft. It's, it's knowledge. There's a lot of knowledge involved in being a good butcher. Uh, mm. but you know there's a lot of other trade jobs that are the same there's not enough plumbers there's not enough bakers there's not enough all of these stuff you know all these people that go to business schools will they buy you know there's still a lot of them eating meat um and uh even if you don't eat meat that's okay we need a lot of people to grow vegetables as well it's you know anyway that's a bit of a that's a great that's summary a tangent before so we started the question actually 
we knocked out. We didn't do the thing that was starting to be good, which is get to the question immediately. But anyway, that's my bad. I'm Don't sorry. worry. What you've done is at the halfway point of the season, because this is episode five of season three, that's right. you've given a summary of what we're doing. This, the theme is career, and we've got these four resources that we use as a foundation for all our exploration within this theme. And we really encourage you to look at those resources, but also find your own. Yeah. And, and I think it's a really good segue to today's question, because you're talking about crafts and the time and learning and learning a trade and all of this kind of stuff. Today's question is, how can we know that we are creating a career that really suits us? How can we now, know that we're creating a career that really suits us? This is a very good question. Yeah. It's a very good Now, this question. is a question like yeah. that was emailed to me. Oh, cool. So it's from a listener, a watcher, a viewer, a subscriber, potentially. How can we know that we are creating the career that really suits us? So, uh, which is also a good segue to remind everybody to send questions to you, James. Is this, yeah. is, am I pointing to you? Maybe over there, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, send them to me, not to Willem. Send them to hello at jamesdesouza.com because Willem had no idea I was going to ask this question. So be yeah. ready. He, he, you, we want to stump him, but we never do because he's too wildly creative. So what do you think, Willem? But I How like can we know? Questions. This is a good question. Yeah. It's a tough one. How can we so, know that we're creating the career that really suits us? Okay. Well, this is interesting, and this goes to, uh, and it's not the first time I'm, I, I refer, I reference it because it's the point. Uh, I guess let's start with the Tim Urban post. But similarly, the Alan Watts video that is really about both of those have exercises. The Alan Watts video doesn't have exercises, but it's just telling you to think about what mm. is it that you want. Mm. Mm. Uh, and the the post about how to get a, a career that re you that really works for you or, or whatever the exact title is i can't remember right now has a lot of exercises uh, to look at what is driving you mm. and, and uh, by the way it's it's those exercises are uh, they take time and to really dig into it uh it's very 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 difficult to do by yourself honestly you know that you make a really That's good one thing point. that we haven't talked about yet in this session and i think in this season and i think it's going to be worth uh talking about that at this particular point sorry did you want to add something else no it's i think i think it speaks to the question really well because yeah. we don't know if we're creating a career that suits us because we could do it in isolation and like i'm i'm i love being a teacher but i'm looking at doing something that contributes to other people yeah. that I can get paid for and I'm, I'm getting stuck in a circle in my own head and what I started doing is talking talking to my wife about it talking to some close friends about it and it gives me some perspective on it yes where I can start to see and and even I get feedback on it yes. now sometimes my wife is going to be oh you're amazing I'm like okay that's not always very helpful but it's, it, listening to the way people respond to what I'm doing is super useful yes and, and that and can I help me know what's going on and you said something very important, which was about uh, providing pr perspective. Mm. So there's a series of exercises in the Wait But Why post that are all about, um, so he creates, he, which is what I love about Tim Urban, and we said this in other episodes, but he creates yeah. concepts with a little drawn characters <laughs> that are really profound when you dig into it. They use a lot of stuff from, you know, a, a bunch of knowledge. He prepares and he, he, he reads a lot uh, before creating posts and before writing posts. And he creates his own methodologies for working through stuff. Um, but he talks about this idea that we all have a yearning octopus. Mm. The yearning octopus is all the stuff that you want, mm -hmm. that you know or don't know that you want, conscious, unconscious, whatever. And it's an octopus because every one of its tentacles represents a different area of life and or wants, desires, motives, etc. Mm -hmm. So he splits them out between... Uh, so you could say like what you what, we could look at it from a Nikka guy perspective as well but um the the different tentacles are like he he calls them you can name them whatever you want but it, going with his perspective is fine for the exercise hmm. uh, a moral one like you know stuff that you think you feel you should do because it will be good for the world a one that is uh, there's also a whole side that you want to be fulfilling yourself and or because you want to be admired you want to have people's approval uh, and that sets a number of drives 
Uh, you might have passions that you want to follow. So there's a lot of different stuff that comes into conflict with one another on a regular basis. Uh, at any given time, you can only be doing one thing. So, and I think just to start on, well, also another point I want to put towards the beginning of answering and tackling the question is the, is that we don't know. Yeah. Particularly when you're young, we, we yeah. don't know throughout, your, throughout our whole lives. Mm. Some people are very certain about what they're doing. That's mm. great. Mm. Uh, but, but altogether, how can you know if that is the thing that is going to fit you? You don't. Mm. It's not possible. And when you're young, it's normal. And before you go into your career, even it sounds great to, we also talked a few times uh, in every episode, actually, about um, Steve Jobs' uh, 2005 Stanford commencement address, which is great, uh, with his idea of joining the dots forward that we talked mm -hmm. about in a couple of other episodes. That, so your career can only become a career once you look back on it after a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. So uh, given we're talking to a lot of young people uh, because of our, we imagine our pupils and students, not only because I have friends our age who watch it and enjoy it, but um, you're before your career started or at the beginning of your career. So you don't know yet. So Steve Jobs talks about this idea of joining the dots forward rather than looking back, but it's conceptual in nature. The truth is you don't really know until you try. Uh, and yeah. even when you try yep. something, one you've made a choice so you have to eliminate possibilities yeah it's the yep. only way that you move forward and get anything done yeah uh yep. so while i'm somebody that likes really like relishes and sometimes goes into complete indecision and choice paralysis mode but i really like it all looking at all the possibilities my brother-in-law yeah. and my sister just like mock me <laughs> all the time because of it <laughs> Uh, how do you get anything done yeah no, my sister hates it my sister hates it she's like just stop just pick something and thinking about experiences in a supermarket aisle because i'm like i'm looking at all the products i'm like what's going on in the supermarket aisle uh which is also it's a, it's a professional like it's a professional trouble from actually working in marketing and branding and yeah. and also just be really interested in food and stuff I actually like the supermarket. It's a weird, I mean, it's, I, I don't like hanging out there, but I really will look at what, what, what are people throwing in their baskets? What are they buying? What are all the options that are available on the shelf? Ooh, is there mm -hmm. a new type of mustard going on? Oh, this is interesting. No, I like mustard, so it happens to be me. But. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Villain's World, everyone. <laughs> yes. A world of infinite options. Yes. And but, ideas. And that's why we called our podcast teaching tangents because it is an exploration and career is like that you're feeling your way almost in the dark mm -hmm. you don't know until you do something i really like what you said until you choose something until th there's too many options you yeah. don't because when you choose one path you're necessarily excluding yeah. another exactly so uh, so that's important to know so one way or another <clears throat> once you go somewhere uh you you know, you're excluding all the other options, but that's the mm. only way to progress and to know whether something is going to fit for you or not. Now, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I didn't finish also the point about giving perspective that I like that what you said about working with other people or asking other mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. The asking of other people is not to ask for what you should do. Yes. Or advice, although really people good will point. give it to you regardless. Everybody's going yeah. to tell you what you should do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, your parents are going to tell you what you should do. Other friends are going to tell you what you should do. That doesn't mean you shouldn't hear them out. Uh, in some cases, the parents might be trickier on just, well, you might have to, but I don't know. It depends on the you know, situation. Um, We've talked about that too. You know, yeah, we have. We have. Yeah. I would go back to, um, I can't remember which episode. I know you well, said we should look at and specify. Yeah, episode, episode one. But... Episode one was, is building a career something important worthwhile? But I think you're talking about episode two. Was there a defining moment in your career progression? That can often be where one. external influences, parents, media people but especially parents can set you on a path mm -hmm. that you're like how did i get here i'm in, mm -hmm. I'm in my mid-20s and i'm doing this job how what am i mm -hmm. doing i don't really like it yeah and i think that goes to the heart of what this question is but you're saying about perspective yeah and so, asking other people. so looking at what is it that you want mm. and you could go through either the ikigai circles you can go through the wait but why post which i do recommend because mm -hmm. it's good but one way or another having some system methodology I mean, you helps. could do it with a somebody else you can even do it with a coach or a therapist uh, or different types of courses we talked about the clifton strengths from gallup that's one way to look mm -hmm. at a psychometric environment or to mm -hmm. look at what you're good at 
which helps, uh, that helps so that something like the Gallup strengths or other systems help you have a little bit of an external perspective on yourself, mm -hmm. which then helps mm -hmm. you work towards what is it that you want to do. So mm. uh, thinking about what, what do you enjoy? So here are some of the questions that you could ask yourself to work towards that and that you can ask and work with others. But the way that I would recommend doing that is first to go, okay, well, what am I interested in? Uh, what do I enjoy? Mm. And what do I enjoy? It could be disciplines. It could be the type of books you like to read. It could be, you mm. know, physical exercise, it, whatever it is. Mm. Uh, looking at where, what are you good at? Um, mm. That could be becoming a career. Uh, and then once you have a bit of an idea and you've done some work to answer those questions for yourself, then probably go and ask other people around you. Then and mm. and, yeah. and or bounce what you said back to them to gain that perspective. They were likely going to give mm. you advice, but I would not go ask for advice in this in this context of this question. Is this going to be like how do I create a career that is going to fit my um, that is going to be a good fit for me? Is that the question? What was it going to be? That's the way you're answering it is very much like at the beginning of something, but the tone of the question implies that you're already you're already exploring or you already maybe started a job or have a career. So the question is, how can we know that we are creating the career that really suits us? Yeah. So uh, there's also another thing that is, so you don't know, which was what we said yeah. earlier, right? Okay. Yep. So I, I said a whole process about, you know, but what I just described, you can do at any time. I, I've yes, talked about how I've done my career and I've changed it a few times. So one of the ways, so how do you know that it's not a good fit? Sometimes a good, a very good indication is that you're asking yourself the question. If you ask yourself this question at, at the beginning of a job or a career, then it's, it's a big flag that is probably not right. Or that it might uh -huh. not be, or something's no, not working with it. Otherwise, okay, you would not be asking yourself the question. That is a really, really good point. We are, we are actually that is a really very good smart. point. We are very well. We are very. We're all. We're both as human beings very smart and extremely dumb. Uh, but you would not be asking yourself the question if there is nothing to be concerned with. So. Back yes. to asking yourself questions, I would say if you are asking yourself that question, dig mm. in mm. Uh, and go, okay, well, wait a minute. Why am I thinking this might not be a good fit? What happened? You, you basically said, wait, but why? sorry yes. <laughs> you did i'm a big fan i'm a big fan <laughs> you did you did but the it's a it, i'm gonna say it right every so often villain you'll say something really profound and what you said is really in my opinion really profound if you're asking i never i never got that really or i did know it but the way you said it is really cool the very fact you're asking yourself a question says something and then it's worth digging in i think it's a great point yeah so, and so when you start digging into that question, then it goes, okay, well, why do I think that? There's mm. probably a, a likelihood for there to be a discrepancy between what you expected and what, go, what is going on in reality. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. meaning you have an idea about what you want for your career. Yep. And whatever yep. you're experiencing, because you're asking yourself this question might not be fitting with the image that you had in your, uh, in your mind. Right. Now, what is the nature of that discrepancy is up to you to have a look at. There might be different mm. reasons. Mm -hmm. it, it might be that you wanted to do this for a career and you're now in it and you're realizing you're not enjoying it. Mm -hmm. So it's putting back into question something about perhaps something about yourself. It might be putting mm. something back in question uh, or, qu or questioning whether this job industry career is actually right for you or not. Mm -hmm. It might be something to do with the specific job that you're in at the moment and not with the career. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for yeah. example, uh, I, as a brand strategist, it happened to me to be in a job once where I was doing my job and everything on paper was uh, really good. A very, very good agency, very good money. Mm -hmm. uh, from the outside, it looked like from the outside, somebody looking in, I have made it. I have the right job in the really good yeah. agency, the good money, yeah. the good title, all yeah. that. 
from the inside, it felt like I, I felt like I was failing. It was a very difficult wow. working environment. Uh, the, I'm hesitating how much I want to dive into that, but um, it, it was difficult. There were a number yeah. of reasons for there for there to be difficult. Uh, and but the internal versus external is the point you're making. On the outside, it looked, yay, it's great. But on the outside, of, and I'm referring back to the outside, and I'm thinking, well, yeah. wait, I, I should not give this job up because uh, it's such a great job, and, and it's uh -huh. going to be good for my CV mm -hmm. and all that. But I also <laughs> knew that it would, didn't seem to be going as well as I wanted. And I was blaming mm -hmm. myself for that. I thought I was the problem. Mm -hmm. And from a certain mm -hmm. perspective, perhaps I was. I don't know. But um, uh, my point is, by the end, I had really big questions about my own abilities, even though I was a seasoned professional. Right. And when I when I left, uh, when I left, and then I started another project that went extremely well. Wow. And I was and I was and people were thanking me for the quality of my work, which hadn't happened in a year in the previous job. Wow. And I yeah. and I realized that had nothing to do with it was a bad fit for whatever yeah. reason it didn't have to do with my own abilities yeah. and i was really good at what i did but i was doubting it i was miserable i was not happy yeah now there were things it was not horrible right but but there were things that but it's only in retrospect once i moved and i went to another job that i realized how unhappy i was in the previous one and how it was it was just it didn't work and that didn't have to do with whether my career is a good fit it had to do with a specific time place people an environment that I was in. Mm -hmm. That is really difficult to figure out when you're in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. I think you're also hinting at the, the, the feedback that you're getting and reflecting on the feedback you're getting. Now, feedback can be of the, how am I feeling about what's happening? But it can also be directly like what people are telling you. Yeah. But, and or certainly, not telling you because you like, yeah. you know. Yeah, in this and, case, and, if my if somebody else is redoing my work every time, I'm like, okay, is there something wrong with my work? No, there's nothing wrong with your work, but I know there's something wrong because you wouldn't ask somebody else to redo it every time. Otherwise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I had those kinds of experience where, where there was a lot of unsaid stuff, but clearly there was a discrepancy, and I was I wanted to keep up with the job because it was good pay, good salary, good agency, uh, all that jazz, and I wanted to, you know, and I was. I was thinking it's worth the, it's worth the price. Yeah. And it does um, take a certain amount of courage to look at that, to actually be willing to look at your, yourself and your career and go, well, maybe this isn't yeah. right. And a lot of people will go, well, so I would have stayed longer. I'll, they actually let me go. They, their budgets were cut out. Uh -huh. I never got to the bottom of it, but it, I think there's, you know, one person who didn't like me, but I don't really know. I'm, I'm, I also know there were truly budget cuts, so I don't mm. know. Um, it's, it's also easy when it happens quite suddenly to think that somebody's out there and doesn't like you. Yeah, uh, it is. But, and, but nobody told me because I don't think there were also, there were also not really any real reasons professionally to, um, anyway. Uh, so that was, it was an interesting process as well. Now I would have stayed longer but as I said, once I moved on and I went to another job, I realized how actually this whole place wasn't working. And it's difficult to know that. And I think it happens to a lot of people to mm -hmm. start a career, to want to be in it for whatever reason, and, mm -hmm. and to be in a job where it doesn't work, but you feel like you should keep going with it. One, mm -hmm. okay, we are, we, uh, I think a lot of people were uh, lulled into believing that this is just normal. Because once you start mm -hmm. doing something for a little while, mm -hmm. you believe that this is how things are. Yeah. And this is where the bar of happiness is. And we convince ourselves of that. And we let yeah. other people convincing ourselves of that. So, you know, somebody else, parents, friends, whoever might say, well, you know, it's, it's a really, really good job that you have. So, you know, that's just how it is. Well, that, or, the problem is that it's not. It's not how it is. Yeah, that's how you're supposed to do life. You're supposed yeah. to get a, go to university, go to, do really at school, go to university, get a job get married, have children, buy a, you know, buy a house. Like th there's a trajectory of life. Yeah, but, but that's, not but what it, I, that's not what I'm referring to, though. Oh, do you um, mean within a job? No, I mean, I mean within a job. The trajectory of life also, and a lot of society says, well, if you found a good job, stick with it. Oh, I see. Okay. So you're saying within a job, it's a good job. 
Well, Stay I'm there. going back to this idea that if you're asking yourself the question, how do you know that you're creating your career that is a good mm -hmm. fit for you? Mm -hmm. If you're asking yourself the question, you might be in an environment, in a job perhaps, that is not working for mm -hmm. you. But mm -hmm. then the, re the feedback from the outside, and even from your own self, might right. be telling you that it's right or that this is just normal and this is how things are and I shouldn't be asking too much of life or something like that, which okay. is rarely actually expressed in our head, just like I said. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. really, there's a lot of that kind of thinking going on, too. Yeah. So I, I believe a really so and the, so that's there's, there's a difference between whether the career is a good fit and the job yep. is a good fit. That was my yep. whole point. Yeah. What describing what happened to me with my job. And yep. It didn't mean that the career wasn't a good fit. Uh, it meant that, that in that particular case, the job wasn't a good fit. Um, so there might be that. And I would say then, well, so it takes courage to one stop and well, it takes time, effort and courage to one stop and ask yourself the kind of questions that we're going on about. Mm. Uh, and the value ultimately of this kind of question in an episode, if you're listening and wa or watching this, is for you to press pause and to go to the references and do a bit of work to ask yourself the questions that I'm talking mm. about now. Mm. Literally spend a few minutes to do it. And but the truth is it's not minutes, it's hours. Yeah. Hours of dedicated time to really think through this stuff and ideally to yeah. talk to other people about it. Yeah. And have some kind of process to think about and to look at whether what is going on in this job or this career. So uh so one side, that's my point. One side is like it might be the job. Another side is what that you're asking yourself this question about the fit yeah. is what it would be. A, uh, I had it a second ago. I was going to formulate that. Um, this, this notion of fit is interesting. Uh, the, the word, whether something is a good fit or not. Yeah. Well then have a look in your life and have a look at what is a good fit. Mm. Where, where is there, there must be hopefully an area of your life where something exp is experienced as a good fit. What does that look like mm. for you? Mm. Uh, and you go to, so there's also a belief, which I, I have, and I think it's part of our society, that it, things can get better. Things can be better. You yeah. can feel great. And th things don't have to be just a shade of normal, like you go on with life. And that's not true. You can design and create a life that you yeah. love. And probably if you're listening to this, you're privileged enough to have the time to think about it. Which we, yeah. I've mentioned this before. Now, if you have emergencies of such a nature that you can't think about that, then mm -hmm. that's what well, you just need, have to deal with, deal with the emergencies that you have immediately. Mm -hmm. um, now, if you have some time and space to carve to think about those things, then that's great. And mm -hmm. of course, you should. Uh, so looking at, all right, well, where in my life do I have a good fit? Is it with a hobby, with a passion, with a friendship, with a relationship, mm -hmm. with a mm -hmm. job, with money, mm -hmm. with whatever it is? with when you go shopping, something that you particularly look that you like, take it and have a look as well. Like, what is it that you think is a good fit? And what do you enjoy about that? Or something what, what makes it that it's a good fit? Something that I found really helpful is to keep keep a list of things where I know I've done well, or someone has said to me, I've done well, yeah. or that's really helped. And my wife keeps a, an email folder of all the thank you messages that she's got in her job. Yes. And every so often she'll go back and, and then there'll be a pattern within that. Another thing that I look at is where, where does time just disappear? Yes. And in, a, the, in like, the flow, a, in the zone. Yeah. Yeah. Like, a bit like these conversations. I'm like, what? Yeah. Are we even speaking? So then, then I know I'm onto something or uh, where another one is like where, where I know I've done a really good job. Yeah. And like that was, and there are times when you stick to me, you know, that was really cool. That was really good. Yeah. And the and keeping it, but I I found that keeping a list of it, actually listing it, and then looking back at it, and, and of course this goes back to two things we talk about a lot, which is meditating and journaling. Yeah. The my journal has really helped me n notice and and find the themes and explore and like see. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm really good with hoovering up information and then explaining it. Yes. My sister uses that phrase. You're so annoying. You'll just read a book and remember it all because she's not just not like that. Yeah. And, and that lends itself really well to teaching. So that's, that's fine. Yes. Um, yeah, we're all different. It's not about, but but the the looking back and noticing and keeping a list has been for me really helpful way of looking at yeah. like, oh, okay, there's there's where there's a good fit. Yes. There's there are times where I've been 
like really engaged and into something and maybe yeah. that says something what does that say yeah. i'm looking yeah uh there's another one that you just said which i i thought is important as a slight tangent but i think it fits within the overall theme that we're discussing mm. which is uh thank yous and compliments mm. so giving compliments which is something i probably don't do enough but well eh, well anyway reminding yourself to give compliments is cool and yeah. remember what compliments you had yeah it's also part of like looking at this kind of thing uh, or listing like uh, there, there's a lot of what we're talking about which is literally stopping and writing this down yeah whether it's paper or on your phone or on the computer but really mm -hmm. taking dedicated time that you're not watching netflix mm -hmm. you're not playing a video game you're actually like i'm going to think about this stuff and spend some time on it mm -hmm. uh, and then talking with other people the exercise that you'd given me which funny enough was also a recommended exercise in one of my uh my, my clifton strengths worksheet Mm. Um, which is about uh, asking people in your life, friends, family, uh, what are three things that you think I'm good at or that you'd come to me for? Mm. And mm. starting with them, which is very, a way to give powerful. compliment. Let me yeah. start. Uh, here's three things that I would come to you for and then the person can reply. That would give you a material from... Uh, um, from the outside world, so as in pe other people, others who are more objective about who you are and what you're good at than sometimes yourself. Because mm. we tend, or I tend to, I mean, I tend to beat myself over the head with stuff. So for example, yesterday night, I was just saying before we started recording that I had a really great compliment on my writing. Mm. Uh, and which was great because it's, it, so it was funny because the, uh, the immediate, my immediate reaction is that I use that as, as a stick to beat myself up for not writing enough. Uh -huh. uh, but then I was like, okay, let me not do that. <laughs> the, the, I know myself enough and stuff like, you know, my training and the coaching allows me to notice quite quickly that I'm doing that. Yeah. So, um, and then, okay, give that up. And, uh, and then look, okay, well, I, I should be writing more. And it's a great reminder. And it's great that somebody noticed. Yeah. It's great to yeah. receive a compliment. It's extremely flattering. Uh, and that I could be writing a little bit more, but it also gives me direction for um, what I am good at. And the stuff mm -hmm. like, so having a system, so the, the, there's a system in the Wait But Why post. Mm -hmm. uh, we recommended uh, Gallup's Clifton Strengths because it's, it's mm -hmm. inexpensive to do online. Mm -hmm. um, and we're not working for them or anything, right? Uh, Myers yep. Briggs, if you're into that, and it's it's free. There's a lot of free tests for the yeah, Myers Briggs. Yeah, do you know it's funny? It's funny you mentioned Myers Briggs because uh, the so. And remind me, I, I'm going to add something else about that and the way that I consider this for this question. But sorry, go. Cool. Yeah, sure. The sixteen personalities dot com. Yeah, that one, which uh, is the one a lot of people go to. That that's the one. My so my students were talking about it, mm -hmm. and I did it, and. I read it and then my wife did it and read it. And we've been talking about both my wife and I've been talking about careers and stuff. And it was, it's very insightful. It it's is. given me now it's, it's cool when you do stuff like that, but the tendency can be like, Oh yeah, that's cool. And then you forget about it, but it's given both my wife and I a foundation on which we can start looking. Yeah. It's, re it's really, and I've been off school for a bit on half term. It's given me a chance to reflect on like, okay, what, how do I want to change my classroom? So the yeah, it's 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 super useful to have yeah. a framework to look at. So you were going to say something about the framework. Yeah. What's mo what's the most useful is not to place yourself in a box called Yin TJ or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, or to, it's, that's Agreed. not useful to say this is who I am. Just like oh, you're yes. such a Capricorn. That's not particularly useful. What is yeah. useful, however, is to look and reduce the amount of. So we looked at all. We talked and joked earlier about everything that's possible. But somehow yeah. you need some way to, to filter and to start to reduce everything that's possible. Mm -hmm. So everything mm -hmm. we talked about, about looking at what you what do you like, et cetera, that, that helps. Uh, and these kinds of tests help as well because they give broad strokes areas mm -hmm. that are likely to be suitable mm -hmm. for you. And it's not just one career, but it's a type of approach that, yeah. uh, that may well be useful to you. So, for example... Um, uh, on the, well, on the 16 personality stuff, I'm a, I'm a protagonist. Uh, which is ENTJ or Ian, Ian? I can't remember which one I am. I'm Ian. a protagonist as well. Are you really? That's yes. Funny. Well, I've got the same one as you, whatever that one is. Is it Ian, Ian FP? No, I can't remember. Uh, yeah, I think it is ENFP. ENFP. I think it's yeah. ENFP. Yeah. Um, anyhow, 
the uh, and it has this really on the 16 personalities.com, it has a really cool avatar of a guy it does. with a sword. It really, it really does. Duh. I'm like, yeah, that's cool. I'm, I'm the guy with the sword. <laughs> and then, and then I went down a whole tunnel looking at all stupid stuff like which Harry Potter character, which Star Wars character, which Marvel character. And because oh, really? I, I didn't do that, yeah, it's yeah, it's ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. And and also the, the archetypes on the 16 stuff with Myers Briggs, and my one is teacher. Yeah, funnily enough. There's the teacher, teacher, there's coach in there. Uh, and I, so, you know, it, it's funny at the moment, I'm developing also what my career is looking like. I'm a brand strategist, but I'm also a teacher and that fits. I have mm -hmm. just, I've just been doing more work and it's likely that I'm going to be doing a little bit more training in communications uh, rather than only advising clients on their brands. They're linked, mm -hmm. but training, coaching, uh, which did form a large part of my career, even though I had different types of jobs, there was a lot of uh, learning and transmitting knowledge. Uh, and that gives me a frame for like the kinds of stuff. So the kind I know that the kinds of jobs and career that work for me are uh, having one on one time mm -hmm. uh, or mm -hmm. speaking with groups, sharing, like accumulating and sharing knowledge with others um, and working around ideas and new stuff. So there's got to be a level of creativity to the kind of job that I do. And however, I do this it. is, I think I'm this likely to be working with my hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me. Yeah, no. <laughs> Ideas. Yes. Making uh, stuff. No. Breaking stuff. Yes. But, but there's a couple of things I want to add to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. that I think are really interesting. So one is when, when you start asking other people, ask a bunch, whenever I've done that kind of exercise, there are themes that run through it. There are similarities. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. That's one point. The other point I really want to emphasize is even though Willem and I might have the same protagonist, we're so different. Yeah. <laughs> we're similar, but we're different. Yeah. So if, and, and it's really easy to, and I'm really glad you said that thing about like, don't put yourself in the box just because you are something like some profile or whatever, it doesn't mean you're determined. No, that's not what we're saying. We're saying it's a use, it can be, it's a really useful jump off point, but it's really interesting that we have this similar profile, but we're so different. Yeah. So I think this type of exercise is good to be able to narrow down the types of stuff in yeah. career that you want to do, uh, types of roles. And then there's a whole other side, which is, which uh, is, I mean, it's tangential to the question, but I think it's uh, it's part of it still, which I mentioned before. Mm. <clears throat> Where you end up uh, depends on the kinds of opportunities you have. Opportunities mm -hmm. for interviews, opportunities for jobs, <clears throat> job offers. Mm -hmm. uh, and it takes some risk. And as I said earlier, courage, et cetera, to put that back into question. Mm in the hope of, of uh, getting better, of, of having something that works more and better for you. And we sometimes make mistakes. There was another time I, I left the job uh, because I was not happy. And I was like, there's a number of things that have changed. My director had moved on. I heard the CEO was going to leave. Yeah. There was a lot of changes going on. I felt like uh -huh. I'd run around and I, I had a, I've learned everything I wanted from it. Uh -huh. It was good money, a good agency. Again, I could have stayed longer. I maybe should have. And I had another job offer, which was more money. And I thought, you know, what? I might as well just take it. It can't be worse than where I am anyway. And, and it was. <laughs> it was <worse. laughs> and I was able to quickly notice that, wait a minute, this was not what I was told during the interviews at all. And, uh, and that was, a, I don't know if it was a mistake. Yeah. Because it was also true that I was not happy in the previous job. Rationally, right. maybe I could have, should have stayed. Uh, to uh, have more experience, uh, which, by the way, that's yeah. a, that's a a a, um, uh, a uh, trigger a, idea. No, a, I would, no, no, no. I'm thinking of of a default, but or disadvantage, a default, a of mine, a a black or a blind spot of mine, or something that yeah. I'm not good at. Um, which is, I'm not, I'm not very good, and I don't have a lot of experience in really following through for, for in the long run. Uh, so like okay. the butcher right, that I talked right. about earlier, who's got 55 years of experience and probably is a master at what he does. I'm not yeah. very masterful because I don't follow through. So that's one thing to listen to what I'm saying with a pinch of salt. Uh, because to be masterful and to stay in the same job and to, to, you have to, there's a level where you have to stick with it. 
and sometimes it, there, sometimes there there are you know bad times that it doesn't really work uh mm -hmm. and you're sticking with it in the hope that well i don't know actually maybe i don't know in the hope of anything because i haven't done it so just you have more experience on that side of things i do uh, because you, i you, was you gonna say though states, states with the same job so i was gonna say yeah. to you though when villain is talking about questioning or challenging or having the courage to quit to look at yourself and move on and change things you've done it you've you've done that through yeah. your career you're you're talking from a position of having done it and it's not theoretical the the idea of like in in episode two where you talk about of this season season three where you talk about is there a defining moment in your career and is even in episode three is career discovery or creation you've shown that you've done research and taken opportunities that story about how you became a brand strategist i think is a great example of thinking hang on is this what i really want to be doing is yeah. this the am i creating a career that really suits me going and discovering something and then making that move yeah. i think it's and that that idea of reflecting and thinking and asking questions and getting perspective you've demonstrated that so well, as much as yes take what Willem says with a pinch of soul you are talking from a position of having done it but i wanted to i wanted to reflect that back to you exactly what you said because you stayed yeah. in the same job but you have asked yourself the questions on a regular basis you do yes that. and then you, you stay in the same job yeah so both work i think it's just different yeah they do and and what i would emphasize is that Yes, I'm in my 18th year as a teacher in that career, and I've done other things on the side, but also within teaching, I've had multiple roles. Yeah, but I've you, you, how moved long up have you and been working at the school where you're working now? Like, I'm talking job wise, I, right? It's, now. Yeah, it, oh, job wise, yeah, it's my 18th year in my school. There you go. So, that's specifically what I was talking about when I was talking about changing jobs, because as a career, I've been a brand strategist for 15 years, but I've not yeah. stuck to a particular job. So, uh it, it doesn't it doesn't matter but I, but uh, what i was pointing out now is stopping to ask yourself questions about how well this is working and whether this is what you want is useful mm -hmm. whether you decide to stay like you have in the same job mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. decide that it's not going to be right and i want to try something else and there's mm -hmm. the, the possibility of getting somewhere there's the possibility of working out things in your own job so that they work better for you yes Yes. There's also that which we haven't talked about just yet, uh, which we will. Uh, there's also the possibility of saying, well, actually, this is not working for me, but I'm going to take a, a, a leap of faith and leave mm -hmm. in the hope that I find something that works better and is more a better fit for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and knowing that you might not, you might, you know, it's some, um, uh, you might not find the better fit immediately, but mm -hmm. it's by trial and error that you mm -hmm. find a right fit ultimately uh and so sometimes the fit into the career sometimes the fit is more towards the job which we've talked about already so uh, yeah. i want to make sure that we circle back to like how do you make things better within your company and there's also which we we circled around a lot of what's going on in the conversation in your head that carries a lot of weight i had a conversation with a student who wanted to ask me a few questions this week so i'm not going to go into detail oh, wow. about what, the, okay. what it was but uh it was well related to an internship opportunity Mm -hmm. And what was super interesting was that this was a, well, a really bright and ambitious student mm. uh, who was a little bit struggling and grappling with a couple of questions about uh, her future internships. And, uh, and then I asked, well, how many applications have you sent? And it was not a lot. So I said, well, wait a minute. Uh, no, you're talking about everything that you want and you're worried about this opportunity. That's great. What you should be doing right now, in addition to asking yourself the questions, is sending applications. You need to mm -hmm. send CVs out there to get what mm -hmm. you want. Mm -hmm. I actually love it. I'm, I'm not comfortable with that. I was like, I understand. But if mm -hmm. you don't send the applications, all, every, all the questions you have running around in your head are mm -hmm. completely emotional, conceptual, because mm -hmm. you're not doing the work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's a certain amount of stuff that needs to happen, which is so yep. to get a job and to get into a career, you need to send CVs. Mm -hmm. You need to get interviews. And yes, that is uncomfortable because you're putting yourself out there and you might be rejected. Mm -hmm. But all of those kinds of questions and the one that we're answering 
so for example if you're wondering whether the, the career your the career path you're on is a good fit for you and all you ever did is send three cvs and you got a job that came up and that's and you haven't questioned anything and you're just working mm -hmm. through this job because it was the first one that came up and it seemed to be okay then you haven't put in the work yeah which is fine it, it's it, it's fine that you haven't but uh you know just go and have a bunch of conversations with people which is another um resource I, i'm really glad you said that yeah go and have another go and have a bunch of conversations so not only yeah. don't know don't only talk with your friends and family about this ask people on linkedin go on lunch club mm -hmm. go on what or go to networking events mm -hmm. of the kind of career and kind of people that yeah. you want to talk to uh, ask your you know parents friends or etc that where you might have people and if, if it's not within your network we happen to have available networks out there and there are generous people that are willing to give their time uh, mm -hmm. and go and ask them like and you, you have a 200 characters on a linkedin request extend your linkedin network so you can go and connect with somebody mm -hmm. and say hey this is mm -hmm. what i'm doing i would love to have 30 minutes of your time or 20 minutes mm -hmm. of your time to ask a few questions because i'm interested in this career path is it possible some people might not reply to you but some people some people will and again, all, if you have to send a lot of requests and get a lot of no's and a lot of people ignoring you, which doesn't mean that they're ignoring you, they're just busy with something else. It doesn't mean they don't like you. Mm -hmm. But if you don't do that, then all of the stuff that is going around in your head is just like, you know, internal chatter, conversation, just drama. It's so surprising how, when you really look at your family and your friends, how many, how much they could put you in touch with someone who could be really interesting and worth having a conversation yeah. with. It's so easy to underestimate it. Yes. And there's always, like, once you start, and it all starts with speaking to someone else. Yes. Once you have a conversation with someone and you have an idea, it's amazing where it can go, but you've got to be willing to, and it, yeah, you know, they might say no. They, who yeah. knows? But you never know. They might say yes. Yeah. As, and looking for a job is one of the areas of life where you're, yeah. you're, you're being vulnerable to get what yes. you want. You have to be opening yourself up. You have to say, this is who mm. I am. And some people are going to say no. Mm. Uh, and you're going to get a lot of no's but the figuring out what is it that you write in a cv that says who you are mm. uh and there's a direct result of you thinking about what is it you're doing what kind of career you're looking for and whether that's going to be a good fit or not mm -hmm. so how do you so i think we i think we've given a bunch of clues on answering that there was one thing i wanted to circle back on which was asking people there was another one i can't remember no the thing you wanted to circle back on was if you're in a job is it you were talking oh, yeah, about the one, job getting career, yeah, yeah, yeah. getting and having. Yes. So if, let's just like recap yes, a little. Yes, yes. So that's, there's that's another area where you. Um, oh, do you want to do a recap? Before? Yeah, I want to do a mini okay. recap. So there's we talked about staying in the right career, and is the career right fit? But then we also talked about is the job a right fit? Because you could be in the same job in a different place, and you're happy in one and unhappy in another. But then the thing we're going to circle back to is. If you're in a job, can can you make the job better, or is there something in the job itself that you can explore and yeah. refer to, or develop, or improve, yeah. or learn yeah. from, or whatever? Right, that's the thing you want to go back to, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, and that's of course is a tricky one, but so. But... And that's the thing that I think I could talk a lot about because yes, for sure. it's it's something that yes, 18 years in the same school, and I've had multiple roles. So like, how so would you approach and how did you approach talking with your manager? Because one of the things that happens when we're oh, complaining yeah. about a job or we're unhappy about it, uh, and I think it's the same kind of situation for anything in life, is that there's a lack of communication. Something's I, I think not so. being said. And, uh, the, and um, sometimes it's very tricky and or one of the things that we could do an entire episode or, or several about. I don't think we're very much taught at school how to have those kind of conversations no, with not. a manager or with a coworker or et cetera. No, we're not. It's, it's a really or good with, point. Actually with anybody, and really. I think that it's an interesting point about Gallup. So Gallup do a ton of research. They're known for their research stuff, but they also do a lot about employee engagement and, and what makes a good job and all that kind of stuff. The biggest factor in their research that determines whether you're happy in your job is your relationship with your boss, your relationship with your line manager. If that's really good, then the amount of satisfaction and engagement and enjoyment you have in your job goes up. So one of the things that I noticed in my career and having my job is that I, it started with me. It started with me being willing to be responsible for my experience. If I was complaining, 
and moaning to my wife or whoever I was moaning to, but not willing to do anything about it, that would just, that would be pointless. So it was always starting with me being willing to go, okay, what can, what can I do? And a bit like you've been saying, Willem, like, who can I speak to? And the first time I really noticed it was where I was always willing to come up with a solution. So it wasn't about going to my line manager and going, I got this problem. What, what, can, what, what, what can I do? What do you think I should do? I would always go to my line manager and say, here's a problem. Here's a possible, possible solution. What do you think? And the first time I did that was the, I wanted, I wanted to be head of sixth form. The sixth form is the year in UK schools before, just before you go to university. Okay. And that was the job I really wanted. And I'd been talking with sixth form pupils about it and they were like, yeah, you'd be a really good head of sixth form. But I, I couldn't just jump into that. So what I did was that I actually, I wrote a job description for deputy head of sixth form. And I, it was based on all the experience that I had about being a sixth form tutor, about most of my teaching with sixth form, about the conversations I was having with sixth form was about, I don't know what to do after, I don't know if I want to go to university, I don't know what, to do for my, what I want to do for my career, all the concerns that 16, 17, 18 year olds had, I had a lot of understanding. And they were coming and telling me stuff and asking me for advice and asking me stuff. So I wrote this job description I went to the head of sixth form. I went to the deputy head. I had my appraisal and I said, this is what I want to do. I want to do this role. What do you think? And they said, yeah, that sounds great. I then had the appraisal with my principal and I said, okay, this is the role I'm doing. This is the job title. Will you pay me more? And he went, yeah. And it was that I was willing to, I had the evidence I had the idea. I came forward with a solution. I'd, 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 I didn't know if it was going to work. I was ready for no, but they said yes. Mm. And then that moved me on to, okay, I really like this. And then I, later on, I became a head of sixth form. Yeah. So I think the two key things are being willing to be responsible for my own career path within the company, yeah. but also being willing to find a solution and propose it and come up with it and have a conversation. Yeah. And how would you approach, let's say, if you are in a job and you're, because it sounds like that could be the person asking this question as well, you're, yeah. you're not sure if this is a good fit. Uh, and maybe something's not really working as well as you'd like, and you want to talk about it with your boss, but you're worried because they might turn out to have a conversation by the end where you're like, okay, this is not working. But you also don't really want so to lose you your mean, job because it's your source of revenue. And or a right, oh, you mean within the job, right? the company. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So how would you, I guess that's one, how would you approach that type of situation where, you know, maybe it's not going well, or it's not going as well as you'd like, you feel like you mm -hmm. probably should talk to them, but it might go in a direction that you don't want, or that you're not ready for. And so you might just be putting it off. But then you don't know how to, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I know I it's broad still, but I think it's yeah. kind of useful to think about that, perhaps. Yeah, so if, if I were, so if I was in a position where I'm in a job, and something's off i don't know if it's me or them or what and i want to address it that's kind of what you're saying yeah so, and you don't know how to address it yeah or if you should because you also you like you're talking yeah. about it with your friends you're like okay I, I should talk about it but i'm not sure how to do it in a way that i'm not going to make anyone upset and myself included or or i don't know i also don't know what else is possible uh, you know yeah you I, went ahead I of think... it to make up a job description that was like really it's very mature of you uh, to do that, but you were also at a level of experience where you could you had you, you could make something up like that. But if you're a junior, I don't know if you would think about no, like, whether it was really, possible to shift to another type of responsibility do, or you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I do, and I do have a suggestion. So wh when I did that, I think I was like 26, 27. But as part of my degree, I did a a year out. So two years at two years at uni, then work for a year, and I was in a big corporate environment, oh, yeah. and. I'm a big fan of and a big believer in structures because they allow for things to happen. And one of the key structures I think is a job description. But, and when I started as a placement student in my placement in a corporate, it was a, it was a corporate where we were marketing credit cards, basically. We were marketing credit cards for companies. 
-hmm. so like uh when you when you go into a clothes shop and they say yeah take out our store credit card and get whatever so that's what we're doing and there was no actual description for what a placement student should be doing so i was 21 i basically set myself some objectives wrote them on a piece of paper and said this is what i want to do and showed them to my manager like i didn't really know what i was doing i made it up and it was scary that's a very good really, really, lesson that's a very good really lesson because a lot of a, a lot of the students would wait that. wait for somebody and then complain about the fact that i'm not being given this they're not taking care of their interns yeah but you but that's a really good way to flip it on its head and say well actually you could just make it yeah what do i want from this experience that's where i started from and I, I write it down and i think that if you're in a if you're in a job where you're not sure is it is it me or is it not go back to what your job is go back to the job description and look at it and are you doing everything on it or is there some part of it that you don't like or are you doing more of it or whatever and then the other flip the the thing that goes with that often is a formal structure of like how you're doing an appraisal so the, and setting objectives for yourself. I am a very big believer in setting objectives for yourself within your job. So what are they? Have you set any? And if you don't know what your job description is, then I highly recommend making one up and agreeing it. If you do know what it is, go back to it and look, are you fulfilling everything on it? And then if you don't know what's happening, or where you want to go within your job, then set yourself some objectives and share them with someone. And nine times out of 10, your line manager will be so pleased that you've want a meeting to set up what where you want to go or what you see with your job description about how you can provide value or maybe this something missing or whatever that they will they will love it yeah they will love it, it and the first time i did it i was like i don't know if this is right i'm 21 i'm making it up is it like but i was willing to take a risk but also i wanted to get something from it yeah and I think that was that was the key thing. So I think there's one summary of that, which is to say that if you go and to have a conversation, bring something to the table. Yes. So absolutely. so that you're not so you you have thought about this in advance. There's some responsibility there, and you have something mm -hmm. to bring, even if even if it's not right, even if you're not sure. It helps the person on the other side to say, okay, mm -hmm. well, this person's taking initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, and it really helps to have something to talk about for so the job description options, the bullet points, the whatever, whatever it is. You're not just showing up and saying, well, I, I, something's not working and I don't know what. And then the other person, the, the boss is like, OK, well, I don't know what to do with this information. I'm sorry. Now, we're two people who don't know what's going on, but we, <laughs> there's something wrong and it doesn't help. And I have other yeah. things to do. So it's tricky. It's tough, but it's possible. And I think that also really helps to figure out, like, what's a good fit for you or not. Yeah. So um, maybe it's a good time to summarize a bit. I think we've got, done a good run at this question. What do you think? Yeah, I do. Well, let's remind ourselves what the question is. How yeah. can we know that we are creating the career that really suits us? And so we, and we've done a lot. We've, we talked about the career versus the job. We talked about reflecting on what you're good at, using a framework to try and understand what you're good at, but don't get over a light on the framework so they put you in the box. Yeah. And I think we haven't said, but and I'm sorry that it's not any better than this, but <laughs> there's, the truth is you can never really know. <laughs> yeah. However, yeah. when you are doing something that it feels right. Yeah, it's true. And it matches. And the, the reason why we we're instead of saying, how can you know, uh, said, do the work of asking yourself a bunch of questions and going through this process mm. is that it helps you figure out where to go so that it, or what to do, where to go, what to think. So that it does feel right. And there's a point where you will find something that feels right. Mm. And then the positive reinforcement happens by asking other people, mm. by checking or having some kind of framework like Myers-Briggs or whatever else that you might be using. So that it helps you kind of like just reduce the amount of possible, but also go back and say, oh, okay, it feels right. And it is within the realm of what people are saying about me, what the Myers-Briggs is saying, et cetera. So they kind of both help one another. But you know, how can you know you don't? but you also know when it feels right. Mm. And you could be doing one of multiple careers, but you can only do one at a time mm. or one thing at a time. So, you know, you, and it takes some, it takes some trying. Sometimes, mm. sometimes in some people, we really know very clearly that, you know, you want to be a doctor and you go in that direction. 
some other times. And that's also what Yuval Noah Harari, Professor Harari talks about in his thing about adapting to the 21st century, is that it's likely that the jobs and the careers we go for are gonna have jobs that change and that we have to adapt mm -hmm. to. But if you do the heart of the work that we're describing, mm -hmm. then you have a stronger core because you know that, okay, well, whatever my job changes to be, my strength yep. is in yep. for me communicating with others or my strength is in knife skills I, with cooking. And, <laughs> and more than go, that. I could be a butcher, I could be a cook, I could be, I don't know, you know. Yeah, and more than that, you, it gives you a way of articulating what you're good at so you can adapt to whatever's happening in the world and know that you can provide value in multiple areas. It isn't about, it's both about the job that you find, but also being able to articulate your talents and strengths and what you value you can provide so yeah. that you can create something, create a career that suits you. Yeah. Okay, cool. Is there anything else? Well, the whole idea that if you're asking something like that question, then it's worth digging in because we, it's it's that was the important part of that episode, I think, one of them. Yeah, it was. I was, I was about to say that, and you yeah. said it. Yeah. If you're asking yourself a question like that, keep going. Dig in. Yeah. And it, another episode to prove that we don't, we have a lot of ways to discuss things, but you don't have hard and fast answers because there aren't any. And I'm sorry, we don't have a silver bullet for you. So you can you can maybe go find the answer somewhere else, but I would say yeah to go through doing some work to be able to answer this one. Yeah, watch some of our other previous episodes. Dig and you can share with us your process. Suggest. Share yeah. your process with us. I am more than happy to have a look at it. Share in the comments, uh, like, send us new questions, like yeah. and subscribe so that other people can find it or yeah. moan about it if you don't want. It. You're like yeah, you <laughs> haven't told me really. How do I do it? I want yeah. a recipe. Yeah, we're we're here to we we're both committed to making a difference to people. Yeah. That's why if you still this. want the actual answer, remember it's forty-two. That's true because the ultimate question is what is six on seven? Exactly, and that might be a good place to end it before we go somewhere else. Yes, thank you. Thank you. See you next week.